Coming up on show 569, new EV subsidies for South Korea, new minis by 2023 will be electric, and the beginning of the end for BMW's original EVs. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to the show. This is EV News Daily. It's Tuesday 3rd of September. I'm Martin Lee. And I go through every story, so you don't have to. I'm trying to save you time. I know you're busy. you got stuff going on. So I'm trying to filter for you and bring you just the news you need to know. Thank you as well to myev.com for helping make this show. It is a marketplace in the US. It's all about buying and selling and learning about EVs along the way. They are based in Miami. And yes, I have been in contact this week to say, you okay? Everything all right? They're all good. They're all okay. If you're listening in Florida, if you're listening anywhere, Hurricane Dorian Pathwise, I hope you're okay. Wow, a new patron came in and signing up as a new partner of the show, Gareth Hamer. Thank you, Gareth. That is, I mean, that's incredibly generous. It's more than generous. Gareth Hamer, thank you so much. Looking forward to uh, sending him a note and getting to know Gareth and finding out more about his story and seeing uh, where we go together on this journey. Well, let's start with South Korea and new EV subsidies. I love to see how different places around the world. Uh, I didn't ever imagine that this podcast would be kind of a global overview of the EV world. I always knew it would never be Tesla centric because it's better podcast out there for pure Tesla. But then it, it, when it became it, it, I was a bit bowled over and I get to learn about and you get to learn about all of the different things happening not just where we live, but around the world. And we go to South Korea for this story. The government are providing the equivalent of around $900 million in subsidies to drive their shift to e-mobility. The money will not only be used to subsidise electric cars, but the infrastructure, says Chris Randall for Electrive. He says the goal is to increase the number of BEVs on South Korean roads by 71,000 next year. But here's the thing. Korea have got their eye on fuel cell vehicles. They want 10,000 of them. In concrete terms, BEVs will subs be subsidised by the state government uh, of 8 million won per car. That is 6,600 US dollars. That's a hefty incentive. And as far as I know, it's a subsidy. So it's a, it's a kind of free money off the car rather than getting involved in next year's tax bill kind of thing like the US. Each new fuel cell vehicle, though, they really want you to buy a fuel cell. That's 22.5 million won. That is almost 20,000 US dollars, right? 20,000 US dollars incentive to have a fuel cell vehicle sitting in your driveway. Strong support for fuel cells fits into the strategy of the South Korean government. They see hydrogen as promising to their economic sector. In January this year, they said it's their intention to have 80,000 of them on the roads within the next couple of years. The thing is, electricity is everywhere. Fuel cell filling stations are expensive to put in. And if you want 80,000 cars, you're going to need more than $900 million in subsidies to build the things. In fact, 900 million goes very, very quickly when you're talking about the world of fuel cell vehicles. And then and then there's the other thing. Like All fuel cell vehicles do is they carry around hydrogen, which makes electricity, which charges the onboard battery, which you then drive with on an electric motor. They're basically an EV plus a bunch of stuff. Take off all the bunch of stuff and you've still got a great EV. They're just called battery electric cars. Putting that aside because it's a divisive argument on the internet uh, and once people are entrenched in their position, they just bicker online. Apart from that, 900 million goes like that if you're going to be putting infrastructure in for fuel cell filling stations. Uh, many of which, by the way, have been closed this year, either because they're out of supplies like the ones in the US or after the explosion in Europe, the others got closed down for safety reasons while they were investigating why there was such a massive explosion at one of them. I will stick with my battery electric car. Thank you. Let's talk Mini, owned by BMW. By 2023, Mini wants additional EVs and a lot of them. Hard to argue against the fact that the Mini has been very successful under BMW's stewardship ever since its rebirth almost 20 years ago. 2000 it was, actually. The Mini brand has really grown to become a very important brand in the automotive world. Impressive sales for BMW Group. Although the cars these days are anything but Mini, when you park one next to what was originally a Mini... 
they're a big car. But according to BMW blog, the Mini E was BMW's first electric car made available to customers. It ran as a pilot in the US and Europe, and it paved the way for the i3. Hard to believe it would then take Mini eight more years to come up with a new electric model. But that's what they've done. And there'll be a few people waiting for their one next year. The EVs in question that I was talking about at the beginning of the story, though, by 2023, is three additional Minis. Pure electric vehicles, by the way. The EVs are rumoured to be a short wheelbase Mini. In other words, a Mini Mini? OK. Uh, a more compact and prettier replacement for the three-door version and a crossover. A taller, that'll be popular, right? A crossover. They're said to be front-wheel drive, use the skateboard-style chassis, 35 to 50 kilowatt-hour battery packs. We'll see what technology goes inside, because BMW have some really great technology they're using on their iX3 and their uh, BMW-branded cars. The fifth-gen... I think it's called like the fifth gen technology they use. What they're putting into the new Mini, though, is basically the innards of a BMW i3, and that is quite long in the tooth. So we'll see what they do with these ones. They're coming out in 2023. It can't be the technology that's coming out in next year's Mini. Well, talking about EV ownership, what will it do to the power grid? Germany has asked the question. And they intend to find out the answer. Over the coming decade, Germany's EV electricity grid, by the way, will need upgrades to enable it to recharge electric cars. Millions. In some people's versions of the near future, tens of millions of cars. Rather than being worried, though, experts are actually looking forward. It's a technical challenge. The engineers love it, says DW.com, on a quiet suburban residential street in Ostfilden a town which is a few miles southeast of, uh, southeast of Stuttgart. There are 10 households that all live next to each other in a, an experiment. And what they're doing is they're helping shape the thinking for the future of Germany's energy supply. It's an 18-month experiment to find out what happens when a whole street charges all at once. The same electricity circuit, the same sub substation, the same EV cars... It's a model of the future. How do electric car recharging patterns unfold when people come home from work and plug them in or plug them overnight? When's the peak load? What kind of battery storage might be useful to help out the grid? So what have they done? Well, they've installed 22 kilowatt EV chargers at each house. So that is already, we're talking three phase, 22 kilowatt EV chargers at domestic level are not common, even across Europe. Some European countries or on 11 kilowatts, single phase would be 7, but 22 is juicy to recharge a car. Each household was given an electric car as well. They are using e-golfs, BMW i3s, Renault Zoe's. In addition, a Tesla Model S 75D, and each household will drive them, and they will be monitored to see what this one street does and what it does to the energy supply. I love that story. Right, let's talk BMW and the i8. Been around a long time now. Top Gear says they're very sad that it's going away. The principal source of their sorrow, they say, come from the fact that BMW has confirmed the ultimate Sophisto edition will be one of the last ever i8s. Production of the hybrid sports car ends in April. It's a real shame. The i8 is a fantastic car, especially after a midlife update. 374 brake horse comes from the motor and a 1.5 litre three-cylinder petrol engine in the i8. It's a three-cylinder. Um, the numbers aren't huge, but the ride quality, the feel, the sportiness, it's like it's unlike anything else on the market. Also, the i3. So the i8 and the i3 projects were space-age technology in cars that looked space-age and in 2019 still look really fresh. The BMW i3 S has also been announced in a new paint scheme, but unfortunately, when they talk about these cars ending production, they really are just talking about colour schemes being changed. The i3 will come in a black and copper scheme, and they're calling it the Edition Road style. No mechanical changes. Uh, for now, though, morning the i8, a carbon-tubbed hybrid sports car, 0 to 60 in 4 seconds, and yet still doing 25 miles of EV range. It was a real vision of what could be done. Been around a long time now. 
What about if you hit the track in your Tesla Model 3? I'm not sure I'd be brave enough to if I ever had enough money to uh, to go down and and buy a Model 3, especially a performance edition uh, with track mode. I'm not sure I would then go and cane it on the track because oh dear, I'd you know what what if you broke something? What if, what if you ran out of talent mid corner and you crashed it? When Tesla first announced the track mode for Model 3, it was a pretty big deal. Tesla, uh, some stop it, topics stay hot for a long time, uh, but Elon will often fan those flames and talk about it on Twitter. Other times, the announcements come and go quickly, says Inside EVs. Now, the Model 3 performance with Track Guide has been tested because that's one of those features that doesn't necessarily get all of the attention that other features do. So... The owner in question is in Wiltshire in England, somewhere called Castle Coombe Circuit is where they took it to. They enabled track mode and they went through 250 miles of range on their Model 3 in 30 minutes. So that is using track mode to its fullest extent. They just rinsed the battery. What would do 250 miles was gone in half an hour. It sounds like a lot of energy use, but, but even if it did, use all of its battery capacity in half an hour. If you spend a lot of time racing or even going fast in gas cars, you know that you can, on a racetrack, get four miles to the gallon, eight miles to the gallon. A gas tank holds 12 to 20 gallons. I mean, look, best case scenario, you're filling up your racing car after not too many miles. So it's not as if EVs are massively disadvantaged, but... Worth watching the video just to see how quickly someone can drain the battery. Uh, it's funny when uh, Bjorn Nyland does his videos and some of those live streams go on for four, six, eight, ten hours. He's doing his thousand kilometer challenges and he's like, oh, this battery will never drain. How do I drain the battery? Bjorn, go to a racetrack and you'll drain it in half an hour. Finally, Deutsche Post. Deutsche Post has received interest from potential partners for their street scooter. Street Scooter is their EV van business. And the board member, Tobias Mayer, uh, said that, uh, and according to Auto News Europe, the German Postal Services Group has now made 10,000 street scooters, but has shied away so far from making a large investment in street scooter or taking on the risks which are tied to being a large-scale EV manufacturer. Well, Deutsche Post has also installed uh, charging infrastructure as well, over 13,000 posts uh, in the area, and now they are receiving expressions of interest from potential partners who may ease some of that financial burden. Street Scooter have made a lot of EVs, and sometimes I think get missed off the radar a little bit, actually, being used to deliver the post by Deutsche Post in Germany. Your letters arriving on EV Power. Let's get on to our question of the week this week. What's your favourite EV experience then? Maybe it's driving around a track for half an hour in a Model 3. Uh, what is your favourite EV experience? If you haven't had one, what would you like it to be? Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on Facebook and Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you to the 245 patrons. Yes, we've added one more. Thank you very much, our new partner of the show, Gareth Hamer. Uh, 245 patrons, you keep me going. You can check out what it's all about, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Well, there are 568 previous shows online. If you want to look it through the archive for stories about your favourite topic, your favourite car, you can use the search box on my blog, evnewsdaily.com. Also, you can get the new shows first and free and automatically by hitting subscribe in your podcast app. In the meantime, say hi on the socials. And I'll say hi back. We can have a chat uh, by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>